Hi, Todd Dunn here on November 28, 2018. Today I'm presenting a narrated slideshow of the work that I've done since haul out on my 1936 wooden motor yacht Tortuga. The reason I'm presenting a slideshow instead of video is that Tortuga is in the shed for the winter and there are very few lights in there and there really wasn't enough light to shoot video. So instead I have chosen to take photographs and they're all flash pictures uh, so that you can see where I was working and what I was doing. And as you look at the pictures, I'll explain exactly what's going on. So let's get started. Before I hauled out this year, I had noticed several spots on the hull where the paint looked a little funky. And upon closer inspection, it turned out that the wood was a little punky in those areas. There are four areas that needed attention. They are at the port bow just below the shear. Prior to haul out I thought that I would have to uh, replace some wood in the top two planks but only a few inches near the bow. And also on the starboard bow the top plank seemed a little punky in the top inch or so of that plank uh, right at the stem. Further aft I had a punky butt joint in one of the planks on the starboard side of the hull and also the shear plank aft on the starboard side of the hull had a number of punky spots in it spaced out over a good deal of its length and it looked like I was going to have to replace about 15 feet of planking. So that's what I was looking forward to. As you'll see it turned out I had a bit more to do. This picture shows Tortuga in the shed. I've got my extension ladder up there. I've also got a vacuum hooked up and what I'm going to be doing initially is sanding off the paint in the planks where I think that I need to work so that I can find the fasteners to remove them in order to remove the bad wood. The first step in the repair process is to sand off paint on the planking and any other wood that I would have to remove to do the repair. The reason for that is to expose one, the extent of bad wood, and two, where fasteners were that I would have to remove to get planking off. This picture shows the port bow after I've sanded on the top top trim strip that covers the top inch or so of the top shear plank and also on the top three planks. It turned out when I started sanding that the forward inch or so of the third plank was also punky and it would be necessary to replace some wood there. So I've uh, sanded out the planks to expose all the fasteners that I think I'm going to have to re replace. As you'll see in a little bit I ended up re replacing more wood than just what this would show. And uh, I've also taken my drill with a Forstner bit in it and I have drilled into the bungs over all of the fasteners until I hit the fastener to expose the fastener uh, as best I could without uh, unnecessarily tearing up the wood. Once I pulled all of the necessary fasteners out of the planking, I set about cutting out the bad wood. Initially I had thought that the bad wood was restricted to only the forward few inches of each plank, but it turned out that on the top plank there was considerable rot along the top edge of the plank back about 28 inches. So I had to remove considerably more of that plank than I had planned. In addition, when I started uh, digging that plank out, I discovered that the edge of the deck was rotted. So I was going to also have to remove the uh, tow rail, which turned out to be in terrible shape, as well as a good deal of the forward deck. I want to make one comment about 
uh, the construction of the Tortuga. Tortuga was originally built with wrought iron boat nails and then in about the 90s sometime before I got the boat the top sides were refastened with number 10 stainless steel Phillips head screws. So the planking in this area is all original. It's old growth Douglas fir. So I was able to easily remove the uh, stainless steel screws. They were still in good shape after a bit over 20 years. And I also had to pull out the wrought iron boat nails. They're very difficult to pull out because one, they were countersunk, so I had to chisel out around each one to expose the head. And wrought iron is very soft, so when I pulled them, if they were still set solidly into the frame, I was I often uh, basically bent them and uh, the nail puller would just slide off the heads as they deform. So they're pretty tricky to get out. Anyway, we'll take a look in a second at what those wrought iron boat nails look like after 82 years in the hull. Okay, here are a few of the wrought iron boat nails I pulled out. They're generally in pretty good condition except for a little bit of surface rust. I think there were about 20 that I pulled out all together and uh, these are just four of them. You can see how they bent when they came out and uh, in general they're pretty easy to remove but you do tear up the wood where you pull them uh, quite a bit. The next step after removing the bad wood was to put new wood in. Now you may notice that the pieces of wood that I've cut out are relatively short and they aren't staggered very much. And a lot of people will say, oh, that's a mistake. However, I have a reason for only cutting out small pieces of wood. And that is that the wood I'm replacing is old growth Douglas fir with a very high ring count. And in fact, it's better quality wood now than any new wood that I can buy locally here in Maine since Douglas fir is not grown here. So I want to replace as little wood as I can to keep as much of the nice high quality Doug fir on the boat as possible. Now I would agree with those who say that the pieces that I've cut out are too short and not staggered enough from plank to plank to be to retain strength when I replace them if I was going to use butt blocks to join the new plank sections to the existing wood. But I never had any intention of using butt blocks. All of the repairs I do on the boat now are done with scarf joints. So what I did to replace the new wood was so what I now I would agree with the skeptics who think I haven't cut out enough wood and I'm replacing too short of pieces that aren't adequately staggered from plank to plank if I was going to use butt blocks for the replacement. However, I have no intention of using butt blocks. My plan all along was to cut scarfs into the existing planks and then cut scarfs into the new wood that matched the scarfs on the existing planks and epoxy the new wood to the old wood along the scarfs, creating joints that are as strong as the original planking, thereby making it easy and feasible to replace short pieces of wood. I used my oscillating saw to cut the scarfs into the plank ends on the boat and on the new wood I cut the scarfs in with an electric plane and was careful to match the two scarf joints. Once I had the scarfs cut I set about replacing the wood and I did it in two stages. Here at the bow there's considerable bend and twist required in the planking. So what I did first was I glued up the scarf joints by painting both surfaces of the scarf joint with unthickened epoxy, then putting on a layer of thickened epoxy, and then 
putting the scarf joint together. Depending on whether or not I could get a clamp on the scarf joint, I either clamped it or I screwed through the scarf joint into the frame behind the joint. And I want to point out that I always centered my scarf joints on frames. I then let the epoxy cure fully. That took a while because it's relatively cold in October and November here in Maine. But it did cure after a few days. At that point, I set about heat bending the wood into onto the boat by heating it with my heat gun and gradually drawing the planking down with clamps to the frames. And once I got the plank drawn down to a frame, I would fasten it with stainless steel screws and then move to the next frame and draw it down there. It took quite a while, but I was able to successfully bend all of the planks into place without any real issues. And this picture shows the result for the port bow. I don't have pictures for the other repairs because they're on the other side of the boat and I was working in about an 18 inch space between the shed wall and the boat and I simply couldn't get the camera far enough away to get decent pictures. Once the new wood was in place I sanded everything fair and then put in some fairing compound on the ends of the scarfs just to uh, get rid of any unevenness there and caulked the seams and puttied them. At that, when that was done, I sanded everything again and put the first coat of new paint on the hull. And the following pictures show the result. Here is the port bow after one coat of paint. The starboard bow after paint where I replaced about 20 inches of planking if you include the length of the scarf joint and I only replaced the top plank on the starboard side. This picture shows where I replaced the shear plank aft on the starboard side. I had to remove the deck edge trim to do that and it is not replaced at this point. And this of course is after paint and I replaced 15 feet 8 inches of planking here and the forward end of the new plank is scarfed into the existing plank which goes all the way to the bow so I now have a continuous plank from bow to stern. I did not get a picture of the punky butt joint that I replaced amidships because I simply couldn't get the camera far enough away from the boat to take a picture there but I did replace about 24 inches of wood to including the scarf joints on either end to replace that punky butt joint. As I mentioned earlier, when I took the deck edge trim off the port bow, I discovered that the edge of the deck was rotted. So while I was working on replacing the planks, I cut away the rotted wood in the deck. Now, I should point out that Tortuga's deck had been fiberglassed before I bought the boat and it has about a quarter inch thick layer of fiberglass on it that was laid on top of plywood which was simply stapled to the old deck. So the first thing I did when I started removing the bad wood on the deck was I cut the fiberglass off which turned out to be pretty easy to get off because in the rotted areas the plywood layer had rotted away completely, as had some of the planking underneath. And consequently, when I made cuts inboard of the rot, I was able to easily pry the fiberglass off of the old plywood and simply scrape the rotted plywood off the bottom of the fiberglass. So I still have the fiberglass, and I do intend to put it back. After that, I removed the rotted plywood and cut away all the rotted planking underneath the plywood, opening up the bow. The planking under the plywood 
was tongue and groove fur, and it also is the overhead in the cabin. So I replaced the old planking with new tongue and groove fur, three quarter inches thick, uh, that's screwed down with stainless steel screws. This picture shows the bow after I've removed the fiberglass, cut away all the bad wood, and put new tongue and groove plank ends in to replace what was there. The next step was to replace the plywood that I had removed. I used one quarter inch Akume marine plywood for the new wood and here it is dry fit before I attach it to the new planking. After dry fitting the plywood I attached it to the underlying planking stock. Rather than staple it down as had been done before, I decided to epoxy it down. So I wetted out both surfaces with unthickened epoxy, put on a layer of thickened epoxy, and put the plywood down. To clamp the plywood down, I drilled through it with 5 8 inch pan head screws about every 3 inches. And that provided nice even clamping. After the epoxy had cured, I backed the screws out, filled all the holes with thickened epoxy, as well as the joints between the plywood and the old deck, let that cure, and sanded it fair. Here is a picture of the plywood after I put it down with epoxy and clamped it in with the screws. Once the plywood was glued down, I sanded the top surface fair and then ground a bevel into the edge of the old fiberglass deck and put two layers of 10 ounce fiberglass cloth over the top of the plywood and down over the edge of the uh, new planking. At that point, the weather got too cold to work on the boat anymore. So next spring, I will be epoxying the old fiberglass deck material down and repairing the joint where I cut through the fiberglass to give me a good, strong fiberglass deck. And after that, I'll be sanding everything fair and repainting the deck. Anyway, that was this fall's project. I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll get notifications when I post a new video. Thanks for watching.